Lift your hands and give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him worship. Honor his name in the name of Jesus. Receive our worship. Receive our praise. Receive our thanks. Let it come before you like a sweet savor. In Jesus' mighty name. Give the Lord a big hand as you take your seat. Hallelujah. The potency and the efficacy of prayer. Let me see. And the efficacy of prayer. My monitor is not working. The potency and the efficacy of prayer. Potency means power. Efficacy means effectiveness. Effectiveness of prayer. James chapter 5 verse 16 it says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual or effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. My monitors please. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I thought somebody would come and check the monitor for me now. Haba. Praise God. The NIV Bible puts it this way. Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So prayer is talking to God. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is communicating with God. And by communication, we are talking about dialogue, not a monologue. Prayer is communication with God. All pastors from branches. You're not going anywhere until after the second service. You hear me? Uh -huh. I like to sneak. Praise the Lord. You need a head service, sir. Fought, fought. This way, no. Praise the Lord. Where was I? Praise God. It's not working. Is it working? Please remove the homing. Amen. Prayer. Is talking to God and prayer is fellowship with God, is communication, dialogue, meaning when you talk to him, he talks back. Prayer is enforcing God's will on the earth or in your situation. Whenever you pray, you cause the will of God to be done. You cause God's will to be done on the earth or in your situation. Whenever you pray. 
And please don't forget that. You cause the will of God to be done. Whenever you pray, you cause his will to be done. I say it again. Whenever you pray, you cause his will to be done. His will could be done without your prayer. But his will will be done without fail when you pray. Hallelujah. Prayer is enforcing God's will on the earth. Remember, he said, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Please help us now. Huh? Help us. If you don't want to give me, just remove the humming. I'm okay. I don't want to hear again. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Meaning, God's will is already known by God in heaven. Is documented by God in heaven. And at least is documented in his word. Everything you are holding here is God's will. Is God's will. When you pray, especially when you know what is written and you verbalize it, you make it come to pass. Hallelujah. A man or woman who prays is forming a bridge upon which God will ride to intervene in human affairs. A man or woman who prays has formed a bridge or is forming a bridge upon which God will ride to intervene in human affairs or in their affairs. Until there is such a bridge, God cannot ride. Prayer is a bridge, a spiritual bridge. It's like giving God the right of way, permission to come and intervene. If there is no prayer, God cannot intervene. Remember he said, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will intervene by healing their land and healing their lives or healing the business or healing the family. But somebody must pray. The condition for supernatural intervention is prayer. If, that's the condition, if my people that are covered my name shall humble themselves and pray. So God does not operate in the earth when prayer had not preceded him. God does not operate in the earth when prayer had not preceded him. Anywhere you see God extremely at work, you are looking at a place that has been saturated with prayer. Saturated by prayer. Hallelujah. By the instrumentality of prayer, yokes are broken. Situations change. Satanic forces are forcefully silenced and evicted by the instrumentality of prayer. That's why the one thing Satan will attack more than anything else in your life will be your prayer life. He will seek to weaken it because the more you pray, the weaker he gets and the stronger you get. The more you pray, the weaker he gets, the stronger you get, especially in matters that concern your life. Therefore, to be prayerless is to be powerless. To be prayerless is to be like an ordinary unbeliever. To be prayerless is to be vulnerable. To be prayerless is to be a target of the enemy. To be prayerless is to be subject to incessant attacks, frequent attacks. Check a person who is constantly attacked. You are looking at a person that is yet to either embrace prayer or understand the power of prayer. If you are hearing me, say yes. Somebody shout, Lord, help me pray. Shout it with passion. Lord, help me pray. To be weak in prayer is to be vulnerable to even the weakest attack of the enemy. To be weak in prayer is to expose your flanks and to receive unnecessary bullet from the enemy. To be inconsistent in prayer is to hardly sustain any victory. No matter what God does for you, you will lose it very soon because you lack the requisite prayer force to keep and sustain any victory. 
If you are hearing me, say yes. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, he said, be sober. 5 verse 8, be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil roams about, seeking whom he may devour. So he knows he can't devour everybody. He looks for whom he may devour. Hmm? That's why people go through all kinds of painful experiences many times. Because you open your flank. Somebody used to be prayerful. And all of a sudden, they didn't pray much anymore. And as they didn't pray much anymore, nothing happened. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing happened. Maybe you see experience favor. And you now think that uh, that situation is your new realm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That whether you pray or not, things will happen. Let me tell you. Satan doesn't mind trailing you for 20 years. Keep you prayerless till you are distant enough from God. Till you are distant enough for him to comfortably strike. And when he strikes such people that used to have prayer life, when he strikes them, is the type that they will recover for a very, very long time. If you're hearing me say yes. Whether it's depression, sickness, um, financial troubles, the first thing they want to attack is your prayer life. The first thing you want to drop is prayer. Because of what you are passing through. And that's Satan's grand design. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. You see that the devil cannot devour anybody, everybody. He looks, he selects. He knows. He, he, he prompts you and prepares you for attack. He prepares you. But prayer generates power. Prayer does what? Generates power. Prayer serves as a form of spiritual insecticide. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Spiritual insecticide that, that makes demons and devils can't come near. Prayer forms a smoke around you. A smoke screen. Prayer forms glory around you. When you move, they know they can't dare. Prayer forms heat. He said, your God is a consuming fire. In the upper room of Jerusalem, for 10 days, those men prayed and fasted. And when the Holy Ghost came, he announced himself as fire. You can't be prayerful and be fireless. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? You can't be prayerful and Satan makes me meat of you. Who doesn't fear fire? For him to pin you down, he must quench your fire first. And he quenches your fire by pressing your prayer life down. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Mm. Your life can only go as far as your prayer life allows it to go. Write it in capital letters. Your life can only go as far as your prayer life allows it to go. Your life can only go as far as your prayer life allows it to go. One more time. Your life can only go as far as your prayer life allows it to go. So when God wants to do a new thing in your life, what he does is that he creates hunger to pray. Whenever you notice hunger to pray, there is a call upwards. There is a call, come up higher. Come up higher. There is something I want. I want to put you in a new place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You notice a desire to fast. That's a call. God is calling you. You have stayed here too long. Shift level. Time to move. When it was time for Hannah to receive her child, she had to pray. There was a hunger to pray. To pray and to stay in the presence of God. When it was time for, for, for Haman to be destroyed, a prayer anointing came on Esther. 
and she transferred it to the Jews. And that was the end of the enemy. If you're hearing me, say yes. Somebody shall prayer. There is a generation that, that, that detests prayer. They talk down on prayer. They've always been there and they will always be there. You go to a community, a group, you that is praying an hour a day or two, you will see them. They don't pray. And they seem to flow. Don't follow them. You will kill yourself. Nobody with a weak prayer life has power for longevity. You can't last in anything. You can't. Samson could not pray. He didn't have a prayer life. We never heard Samson pray. Samson prayed twice. The first time when he was thirsty after destroying 1,000 Philistines and God cleaved a hole in the, in the jawbone of an ass when he was drinking. The next time he prayed was when he was about to die. And in those two times, you saw the result. <laughs> those two times, you saw the result. And throughout, he wouldn't pray. And so because he didn't pray, that's why he could go and marry from the Philistines. He didn't pray. That's why he would sleep with the harlot. He didn't pray. That's why he would go to Delilah. Your steps cannot be ordered because you are prayerless. From today, whatever will give, let it give. May your prayer life stay. Somebody shout hallelujah. A man who has prayer backing who has no prayer backing, can be snuffed out by the enemy so very easily. Prayer serves as a very powerful spiritual fence and defense. Prayer serves as a very powerful spiritual fence and defense. It puts boundary for the enemy. You can't cross this line. That's prayer. Against all kinds of mishaps. Prayer is the technology by which we change things in the realm of the spirit so that they can consequently change in the realm of the physical. It's a terrible thing. Let me tell you. Some problems are, don't have their root in the physical. They have their root in the spirit. Prayer is a journey to the realm of the spirit to adjust things so that your life can be easy here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you see a man suffering. How many years you have been trying to solve this problem? Check where. The person doesn't have a prayer life. I'm telling you. And the worst time to build prayer life is when you are in trouble. You, you will not concentrate. You will not be able to build it. The best time to build prayer life is when there is no problem. When you are cruising. That's when to buy weapons. That's when to buy weapons. Do you know that? If you buy weapons, you gather your arsenal, you may never need to use it because the enemy will advise themselves never to come. Barack Obama refused to equip the U.S. Army for his eight years. Didn't buy no weapon. Didn't add anything. Iran was threatening them. ISIS was threatening them. Uh, North Korea was threatening them. Everybody was. Russia was also threatening them. They had to be like houseboys to China. Trump came. Within two years, he had spent $1 trillion. Then started a new, a new law enforcement called Space Force. And he told North Korea, uh, rocket, he called him Rocket Man, don't destroy yourself. He said in the UN, he said, if Rocket Man moves, I have the arsenal to squash the whole of North Korea. By the, and they saw his investment. They, he, he told it. They saw it. Rocket, he, he, he told the guy, I just need to press a button in my office. And you are finished. The guy said, I have a bigger button than your own. <laughs> he said, I have a bigger button than your own. Trump said, don't try it. It is what is called forceful diplomacy. Do you know that everybody kept quiet, including Russia, North Korea, 
He gathered Asana, and yet he has not fired one. He only used one they call Moab against ISIS. Moab, mother of all bombs. That's next to nuclear. Drop it in their caliphate and, 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 and exterminated them. That's quenched them. They were quenched. Only one bomb. Then targeted the man who sponsors terror in Iran, their general. He sent a Scott missile that looked for the man, killed the man. That's all. Didn't kill any other person. Just killed him. There's a reason. During Obama time, Russia was boasting. We have this. We have that. People were afraid that there would be war with Russia. They were, until Trump came. He bought new planes. He built new ships. Did all manner of things. Spent over a trillion in less than three years. Big, big power. And then told nations, don't hurt us. If you hurt us, we'll hurt you real bad. That's what he said. It will hurt you real bad. You won't know where it's coming from. And they know that the man keeps to his word. As a result, nobody has tried. We don't even know whether Putin of Russia is still existing. He, has, he doesn't talk again. Listen. There is a way you come out and you speak from the secret place of the Most High. Say, devils know. There's a live in a bad market. Let's not go there. It may be very harmful. It may be very dangerous. Throw him say, if you touch us, we touch you twice as much. We will give you disproportionate attack. That's beyond what you did to us. He kept everybody at their level. He has not fought one war. See now. But when you don't gather your arsenal, you don't need to look for war. They will look for it in your, in your life. Trump, people went and said, if you touch any of our allies, you won't like it, Rocket Man. Rocket Man came to a negotiation table for the first time in history. That is the, the, the president of North Korea, Kim Jong-un. Is that his name? He came to the negotiating table. Trump also went to North Korea, crossed a certain border, and they had meeting there. That's the first time a president has come and crossed back to show him that he's serious. Have you heard anything again? I will fire you, I will fire you. There's nothing like I'll fire you. Before he did that, he checked the guy on the ground, quenched the powers that sponsor all that noise. Then he went after the guy. Yeah. You know your pastor is highly informed. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Before you talk, do your secret work. Don't go out and, and say, I will do it you. Huh? You will come back not able to talk. You will come back deaf. They have finished you because they check. You don't have any anchor that is holding you. You are as strong as your secret place. You are as strong as your secret place. When your secret place is strong, you can walk into anywhere and walk out. Nothing do you. Don't wait, oh. Don't say I'm too young. Start now. I started building my prayer life as a teenager. Start now. I'm begging my children every day. Trying to put it as a law. From there to turn to grace. Let them build prayer life. Because nobody can look out for you forever. Are you hear what I'm saying today? Mm. People who pray control things in the realm of the spirit. And walk free in the physical. People who pray control things in the realm of the spirit and walk free in the physical. Pastor, pastor, a much poison. See, for you to be a man or woman of prayer and you match poison, the poisoner will be poisoned by your matching. Do you know when God wants to kill an enemy, he makes, allows the enemy go after one of his strong men. Ayayayabakabala. Eh? You go after those men, their eyes are red all the time. Looking for who to kill. Then you went after him. They didn't advise you. You don't have mother that tell you, don't go, don't go. I've done this thing before. Cook, huh? Tell you, Akba. 
I love love. I love to preach love. But there is where you cross. I will put my love in pocket and carry my salt. Are you hear what I'm saying? So that you will learn not to try it another time. If you survive. Did you hear what I said? Prayer gives you audacity. Gives you boldness. Gives you courage. Fires you up. You can walk in and out. Year in, year out. Nothing. Even when you are under attack, you still feel the presence of God. He said, I will be with him in trouble. Why? Because he dwells in the sacred place of the Most High. I will be with him. I will deliver him. And I will show him my salvation. I will give, will give his angels charge. Why? He dwells in the secret place. These people come to church. Time for worship. They are blank. Time for prayer. Blank. Time for word. Blank. Nothing is entering. I'm looking at dead people. Dead. That is, if you are not careful, you will confirm it physically. You can't connect spiritually. You can't. Time of worship, your spirit cannot ascend. They have to prop you as if you are a manual generator. Oh. Lift your hand, lift your hand. Lift it up, lift it up. Why? You have not been to the secret place. All day long. I've been with Jesus all day long. My lips have uttered praise. All day long, my heart, my soul, in worship all day long, I have been with him. Nowhere would I ever honor you enough for all you have done for me. So I will leave for thanksgiving. When you have been with him, everybody will know. <laughs> Even unbelievers will know. When you have been with him, they will know. The disciples spoke audaciously. They spoke with power. And the people noticed that these men are unlearned men. Yet, they took notice that they have been with Jesus. They have been with Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Your first ministry, your first assignment, your first calling is to be with him. That should be Mark 3, 13, 14, 3, 14. Mark 3, 14. Your first calling, look at it. And he ordained 12. That they should do what? No, you didn't say. That they should do what? Say it loud now. That they should do what? They should do what? That's your first call. To be with him. And that he might send them forth to preach. You can't be an effective servant or messenger when you have not been with him. Be with him. Pastor, I don't know how to pray. The best way to know how to pray is to start praying. Start praying. Start desiring to pray. What took my prayer life up was desire. Sheer desire. I wanted to pray. I didn't want to be an ordinary Christian. Hallelujah. I mean from teenage. I, I was a teenager. I wanted to be an effective person. I gave, I rededicated my life. Maybe late 89 or thereabout. Uh, in late 88 into 89, and, 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 and in less than a year, they made me the president of the fellowship. I said, why? They said, because you grew so fast. I said, was I growing? Yeah, one of my friends in the U.S. now, he said, you're growing so fast, so fast. I said, eh, I didn't know. Why? I wanted to catch up. I backslid for how many years? Maybe five years. I wanted to catch up. So I was focused. I was everything I needed to learn. 
I was learning it. Is it worship? Is it prayer? Is it to study the Bible? Huh? Stop all this slow growth. Slow poison growth. It just... <laughs> Today we are going to pray for some minutes. And I want you to pray as if you will die. Throughout this month, we have three services every Sunday. So that we can spend time to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There will be no fourth service throughout this month. If they hear me, so that we will not just preach. But we will do what? Pray. Let it infect you like an inf infection. So that prayer easily burst out of you. Prayer should be spontaneous. Prayer should be instant. He said, pray. He said, uh, Father, Papa, my God. Uh, Father, Father, stop it. Stop it. Get charged. Get yourself what? Charged in the closet. So when you step out, you are ready for anything. You have enough unction to function. Somebody, before he sleeps, throughout the night, he's charging his phone. Charge the phone. And charge power bank on top. Then in the daytime, he goes out with the phone and power bank. The phone cannot even run down battery small. He connect power bank. Yet his own life, his own spirit, is not charged. Throughout the night, all he was doing is eating a bangogo. In the dream. They were pursuing him in the dream. Swim in water. Then you will fly. And you can't even look for a way to charge that your spirit. All these demons are like flies. They perch on you because there is no fire there. Then you step out into the day. And you want the day to walk. And you have not been charged. Your battery. How many of you know smartphones? Real smartphones. When the battery is low. Certain functions will shut down. That's the truth. In the same way, when your battery is too low, there are some spiritual functions that shut down. You can't, you can't hear again. Nothing. Because you don't have enough power to make that connection. Let me round up in this service. Let me not finish my power. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. What takes power out of prayer? Some people pray, but no power comes out of it. They pray, nothing changes. Still the same. So what takes power out of prayer? I think I identify five things. Or four. Oh no, there's supposed to be five. Five things that takes power out of prayer. Number one, when your heart is not right with God. You read it from the Amplified Version of James 5.16. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your sleeps, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. The, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available that is dynamic in his walking. So based on this amplified version, let's look at a few things. Number one, when the heart is not right with God, prayer will have no power. It will just be blabbing. You're just blabbing. And the Buddha can blab for hours even when they know there is no power. They just talk. Everybody will think they are, they are spiritual. They are prayerful. But you know there is no power. It's a religious exercise. You're just wasting time. It has to be prayer of a righteous man. Is it the prayer of a righteous man? Not just a man. That's the prayer that produces power. The prayer of a righteous man. To be righteous is to be born again. To be righteous is to be born again. And to choose godly living. There are many born again Christians 
who have not chosen godly living to be righteous 2 Corinthians 5.21 to be righteous is to be born again and to choose to live godly 2 Corinthians 5.21 for he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him the day you got born again, God gave you his righteousness. So, it's a positional righteousness that comes by your being in Christ. You are the righteousness of God in him. When you are in him, you are righteous. You may not be 100% perfect, but you are righteous. When I say things like, it may not be 100% perfect, I need to be cautious. Because people just use that one as a means of laziness. And just relax. See, then now they are talking about, you don't need to confess your sin. That's what is being preached in some quarters now. You don't need to consult. So First John 1, 9, they now look for how to explain. If you, for, if, you, for, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. They look for how to explain it away. I don't understand. If it was in the Old Testament, they would say it's Old Testament. Now it's in the New Testament, close to Revelation. It's an attack of the devil on the church. I'm telling you. Eh? Lot, with all the mess up, he messed up in the Old Testament. Second Peter 2 say, for that righteous man, they still called him righteous. That's why I had to put disclaimer before I said it. They still call Lot righteous. It worried my mind. They declared why he messed up by seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul. He vexed his soul. So a righteous man or born again man can be careless, expose. Is hearing and is sight to evil and vex your righteous soul and do unrighteous things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Positionally, by new birth, God has made you righteous. Maintain it by the choice of godly living, godly companionship and association. God is a for, 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 for evil communications, corrupt good manners. Is the prayer of a righteous man that does what? Avails. Glory to God. What does it mean to be righteous? To have clean hands. To have what? Clean hands. Somebody say clean hands. Psalm 23, verse 3, 24, sorry. Verse 3 to 5. Psalm 24. Verse 3 to 5. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or into the presence of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. So you, that's why I said you can be praying but you have not ascended. To pray is one thing. To ascend is another matter. Prayer is gaining ascendancy into the heel of the Lord. Into the presence of the Lord. Say, Who shall ascend? He that has clean hands. Don't let money dirty your hand. Did you hear what I said? Let me tell you something. If you stay with God in righteousness, he will prosper you. I'm telling you, it's a lie for people to make it look as if if you are righteous, you won't prosper. It's a lie. Job was righteous. He eschewed evil. Abraham was righteous. That so Joseph was righteous. And what happened? They prospered till they died. So there's no such thing. Uh, when you, 
You follow? They say, let's leave Bible aside. Let's face reality. There is no reality outside the Bible. The Bible is a reality. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, maybe let's, I don't know, but maybe we should just pray. Let's just do number two. Number two. Uh, number two. And get ready to pray. Get ready to pray. Give me soft sound in the background. Give me soft sound in the background. Something beautiful that we can pray with. Shata, Kaliba, Katos, Reketa. Hey, some of you, as you say pray, you're just wondering how you will start. Should I start with Father, my God? Or, oh Lord, my God? Which one do I start? When you are hot, prayer busts out. Anyhow, it just comes out. Anyhow. Anyhow, starting is not a problem. Amen. And the last time you, that, the, the way you feel, that's the last time you feel like that. From now on, prayer will be instant. Instantaneous. In the name of Jesus. You know that you can be sleeping and be praying? Yeah. You are sleeping and you are praying. Your spirit is still groaning. Your body is trying to rest. But your spirit, I saw it in secondary school. I saw our leader. He was sleeping and his body is shaking in prayer. I said, ah, ah. I said, Jesus. I've not even started the one in the physical. And this person is inside sleep. He's still praying. Let me tell you. There is a way you pray to a point. Even in sleep, prayer is going on. I'm telling you. Glory to God. Look at number two. Why? What takes power out of prayer? When you have grudges and ill feelings. Grudges and ill feelings will kill prayer. Will kill power in prayer. That is why we are to confess our faults one to another. Confess your faults. Open up to each other. Brother, I've been bitter against you for what you did to me. I'm not happy for what happened. This, this, that. He said that you may be healed, not forgiven. That you may be healed. <clears throat> Give us the amplified of that scripture. That you may be restored. Now what? Look, look very far. Uh -huh. Confess your, to one another. Therefore your faults, your sleeps, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And pray also for one another. That you may be healed or restored to what? A spiritual tone of mind and heart. Ill feelings. One of the ways they go is by talking with somebody or the person involved. That's how you take it away. It's not, I don't go and talk with somebody who hurt me or offended me or have offended because I'm strong. It's because I want to pray. When people don't value prayer life, they don't care who they offend and though they don't care who is offending them. They don't care how they feel. Why? They don't have prayer life. Prayer life is the reason I live in peace. I'm telling you the whole truth. I can fight for Africa. But I know I will meet with my maker in the morning or any time of the day. So I would rather let it go. Nothing can be compared to my time with my father. Let it go. Offend me, carry it and go. I don't care. There are people that have offended me. I have not confronted. It's not necessary. I still love them. We are still friends. And I've forgotten what happened. Why? The love of God is shed abroad in my heart. Did you hear Hebrews 12, 14? It says, follow peace with all men. And holiness. Without which, no man will see the Lord. You can't see God. You can't see God. In your prayer, you can't gain ascendancy. I like First Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Let's close there. First Timothy 2 8. Give us King James first. Let's close there. What does it say? I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without what? Wrath and doubting. Without wrath and Doubting. See amplified. See amplified. I desire therefore that in every place men should pray without anger 
or quarreling or resentment or doubt in their minds lifting up holy hands. These are the things that take power out of prayer. So you are praying. That's fine. No power. No power. He said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man stand to your feet. We can, sit down, sit down, sit down. That's not how they do something. When you hear something like this, let it fire you. Stand to your feet. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Oh, whatever is attacking your righteousness, let it be arrested today. Lift your voice and say, Father, whatever has attacked my righteousness, my right standing with you and with my brethren, let it be arrested. Pray, 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 pray. Somebody pray. Shut 
mighty name. This next prayer is our last prayer for this service. Lord, drag me to your secret place. Cause me to be used to it. Drag me to your secret place. Entice me to your secret place. Woo me to your secret place. Help me to get used to it. Help me to have it as my lifestyle. Say, Father, drag me to your secret place. Oh, Lord, Drag me to your secret place. Help me to be used to it. Help me to get used to it. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Pray from your heart. Take me there. Father, keep me there. Lord, take me there. Father, keep me there. Oh, Lord, take me there. And keep me there. Lord, take me there. And keep me there. Father, take me there. Keep me there. Take me there. Keep me there. Take me there. Get me to used to it. Help me get used to it. Help me to have it as my habitat. As my natural habitat. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. I am dying, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice. And it spoke thy love to me. And I long to rise in the arms of faith. And be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou art died. Can we have the other? Bleed inside. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Hallelujah. Let my soul look up with an upward gaze, and my will set, Lord, to the cross. Where thou oh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy breath, please. Let's hear the next verse. Oh, the pure light of a sea. That before thy throne, I, 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 and when I kneel in prayer and with thee, O oh God, I come here.
depths of love that I cannot know. Feel like love. instrument of prayer. Make me an instrument of worship and prayer. Go ahead and tell the Lord. Make me an instrument of prayer and worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I want to pray for somebody today that want to make peace with God. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. You want to start afresh. You want to ask Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you. You're not sure if you died now, you'll be able to make heaven. Let me pray with you, please. You're not sure about eternity. For a long time now, when you pray, you don't connect. I want to pray with you. Wherever, whoever you are, quickly. Pray this prayer with me from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I repent of my sins. Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. Today, I give you my life. Take my life. Touch it. Use it the way you like. Make me the person 